Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Maryland Darling Show, and welcome to another episode of A Pen Review. Today, we are looking at the Sailor Pro Gear Slim in Dragon Palace. Alexa, stop. <clears throat> so, how is everyone doing today? Are you having a nice day? I hope you're having a nice day wherever you are in the world. Let me just turn off all my sounds so nobody's annoyed by my dinging and booping. <coughs> so, how's everyone doing? Let's share this with our friends so that they can come and hang out with us too. Alright, we're going to share this. With our friends, I'm going to show you guys what I'm doing. So, I'm going to share. Guppy. Share it with the Pinterest and the Facebook and the Twitter and the Tumblr and the Blogger. All right. So, how's everyone doing today? I got some new subscribers, so thank you all for subscribing. It really means a lot. Let's take a look at this pin here, shall we? All right. So here, today we're gonna talk about the part. The today we're gonna talk about. The Sailor Pro Gear Slim. We're going to talk about the parts and features. We're going to do some measurements, some weights, some size comparisons. We're going to do a writing sample, and then I'm going to tell you what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. So here is the box that it came in. It says right here, if I could just have some focus, there we go. It says Sailor. PGW30 and then there's some more letter numbers underneath that it says um 9913370100 and then there's a character of some sort down there okay it comes in this cardboard sleeve Push it out from one side. Cardboard sleeve comes out, and we have the box. Hi, Gary. How are you doing today? When did you start buying expensive pens? These were. Now, before I continue, I want to address this because <clears throat> this was a loan from pen friend Camilla. So, huge thanks goes out to pen friend Camilla for providing the pens for today's review. So, box comes off. Here is the pen. On their pens they have these little, little blue bit things for whatever reason, I don't even know. That comes off. Inside the box, we have this beautiful, super lush coffin pillow. Then we have some Pen World Reader Choice Award thing. Okay, and then we have our sailor booklet. And, uh,. This is in Japanese. Oh, 
Oh, and it's upside down, of course. Oh no, it's not upside down. So, shows you a little bit about how to use the pen, a couple of pictures, and then there's some QR codes there if you want to uh, check that out. <coughs> And then there is some little pamphlet here. It says uh, for stationary sailor. I don't know what that's all about. And now this is a big assumption. I did move this from the Wicked Witch of the West to this box because I think that it comes with sailor cartridges. And I also think that it comes with a sailor converter. But I'm not sure. This is just my huge assumption. But I got those from the Wicked Witch of the West box. Okay. So all that was in there. Super lush box. Like this is this is a nice coffin, let me tell ya. <laughs> one could only be so luscious as to be buried in one of these. <laughs> all right. And here is the pen. The pen is got kind of a shimmery-esque. I'm just gonna take my face out so that way we can concentrate on the pen. <clears throat> the, the pen comes like these. And it has these little tiny gold flecks throughout the entire pen. And you don't really see this on a lot of people's reviews because it goes so fast. So I'm just going to kind of give you a little little glimmer at the uh, sh shimmer in this pen, just real slow like. And it's literally all over this pen, so. Okay. Here is the finial. And it has their sailor anchor on it. And then it comes down to a cat man <clears throat> that has the clip attached to it and it is nice and stiff but springy and usable. Cap angles up to a tiny cat band and then a lighter green ring and then a thicker green ring that says Japan. Fountain, founded 1911. Sailor. Oh, Sailor Japan, founded 1911. <clears throat> Hi, Obs, how are you? Cap comes off in one turny turn, one and half, one and seven twelfths. So about one and seven twelfths of a turn, which is under two, so that's good. Inside the cap, we have we see a cap liner, a clear cap liner, and we can see where that <clears throat> we can see where that um, clip is asphyxiated to the finial. You see the cat band, and there are plastic threads. Plastic on plastic, so that's very nice. <coughs> okay, a very nice cap. Not cheap, rather robust in weight and feeling. Then we have the, the nib. Has the sailor logo anchor on it. 
with some little bit of filigree. <clears throat> I'm going to turn up the lights so we can see, so we can really see the uh, the look of the the nib here. It has just a little bit of filigree along the outside. I'm going to try and zoom in so you guys can see instead of me. Getting so close. Actually, I should just do this. There, there we go. Now we can see that it says 14K, 585. And it has a... Uh, a little date code there. Oop, I'm getting ink on my finger. Okay, and then on this side it says MF for medium fine. This is a really nice nib. So this is a medium fine, and here it <clears throat> here's a look at the plastic feed. Has a little tiny lip, and then the grip section leads up to a little band, and then it leads up to a little some threads, and then a straight way, and then it leads up to the barrel, and the barrel gently gently tapers down to the barrel um, ring and then the barrel finial and it's flat. The, uh, the barrel does come off, screws off. There are metal to plastic but I do see that there's some little lines in here. I'm assuming that these are to keep the pen from rattling around with the converter, so that's interesting. Grip section has a, a ring here that leads down to an O-ring that leads down to a metal inner bit with some threads. And that <clears throat> houses the cartridge converter. Okay. I do want to take just a small second to um, put this down for a second. I'll be right back. Two shakes. I wanted to rinse it out so we could see inside. <clears throat> so inside there is a, a ring with some holes in it. If you had a special tool, you could unscrew the nib housing from the grip section. But so far I have not been able to take out the grip section by twisting. Not forwards, not backwards. <coughs> So the um, nib is friction fit and is not keyed. So the, the grip section is circular. 
which is great because that means you can put it any which way you want. Nib and feed. Able to be disassembled if necessary, but should not be the first line of treatment. But you guys know me. I like to know how things work, so I take everything apart. At least I try to anyway. Oh, and then I drop my nib on the floor. <clears throat> so this nib, this feed is interesting because it kind of has a bring up the lights has a very interesting um, like a filling way the, instead of coming down the shaft like this and just going out the back it like the ink when you fill it comes down the shaft here up around this little bit and then through there and on the other side too which I've never seen anything like that before I thought that was pretty interesting wanted to show that off there's the plastic feed here's the nib it does have a little notch in the nib so that it does meet up with the with the uh, feed and there is a date code on there 22 L mm. and the nib fits right into the notch right there okay fits right into that notch and then if you hold it near the back you can push it right into there and give it a little shove why would you need to take these apart if you got a shimmer ink in there and it stops the flow that is the only reason that you should take these apart but I like to know how things work so this <clears throat> converter also comes apart so if you if it got stuck for any reason you could unscrew the uh, cartridge converter I'm gonna have to open this bit here so this little bit comes apart for easy maintenance okay <clears throat> and that just gets shoved in there <clears throat> See the Pro Gear Slim is my jam. All right. So let's let's see what have we talked about so far. So we did the box, <clears throat> box. The box had. Uh, instructions came with a cartridge and a converter and I think that was a warranty information but like I can't read Japanese so um. Filling instructions. And a tag, a clip tag. Okay. The pen. We did the cap. Finial. 
clip, inner cap, <coughs> uh, threads. So the threads are nice because it's plastic on plastic. You don't have to worry about the uh, the um, being stripped. Um, then the pen. We saw the nib. Gold. It's a 14 karat gold. Medium fine. The slit is straight. Why do I talk about the slit? Because here, within the next year or so, I have a really cool nib on its way to me, and I don't know when it's going to come. It's in production, so <clears throat> it has a very cool pattern in the nib slit. So... The breather hole the breather hole is circular. And we talked about the feed plastic. Uh, grip section. Plastic. <clears throat> plastic, resin, I use these words interchangeably. I usually just say plastic because that's basically what it is. It's a plastic pen. Plastic pen with gold hardware. Um, plastic. Um, let's see, the barrel. Classic. <clears throat> the converter. <clears throat> uh, um, we saw the uh, I'm going to call it a nipple, but we saw the converter nipple on the inside of the grip section. Um, <clears throat> let's see. I think the movable. So the converter or the grip nipple is not removable unless you have a. I'm going to put a start, and that means unless you have a special device. <clears throat> Plastic makes it sound so cheap. Yeah. Well. I don't see any difference in quality between this pen and this pen. This one cost me a dollar and eighty-eight cents. This one cost three hundred dollars. So plastic, <laughs> fancy, fancy plastic resin. It's a resin pen. Yeah, probably injected molded resin. I mean, they make hundreds of these. So, I mean, I'm going to make a giant assumption and say that it's injected molded. Which is, I don't see any gates on it, but they make so many of these. It would be very difficult to do these at a one-off. A one or um, turned acrylic. <coughs> Okay, so cap is resin. We'll call it resin then. Better <laughs> resin. 
fiend. Okay, the fiend material is nope. The feed material is is plastic. I think it's ABS. Looks like ABS plastic. So grip material threads size nib material. Okay, so <clears throat> the nib. Um, there's no flex. It's a very stiff. No, very. There's no very no line variation. Reverse writing. It does do reverse writing. It's a super extra fine line though. <clears throat> Not too bad, but the sharpness either. Directions. Everything feels smooth. Now, I gotta tell you, I had the same problem with this pen that I had the other pen. And that really sucks because when you have a pen that's over $200, you should have a smooth writing experience right out of the gate. And that was not how this pen came to me. This pen came to me scratchy and just god awful. I had to use my very fine uh, micro mesh here to get. I, I looked at the nib with my loop. I made sure that the tines were not out of alignment, which they were not. And I did some sideway strokes and up way, down way, and in all directions. It was just horribly scratchy, and I had no idea why. Because it looked smooth, it looked very smooth, and it wasn't out of alignment. I looked it with the 60X, couldn't tell. So I did the same thing that I did with the other pen. I had to take it with the, the very finest nail file and do a whole bunch of side to sides and some up and downs just to kind of get it smooth, rotate the head a little bit to get it to smooth out. And then I took it to the super polishing and gave that a couple of workarounds. And then now I have a very smooth pen. If you do not want to void your warranty, don't do that. Send it off to a Nibmeister or um, somebody that you trust with smoothing a nib. I have been doing this long enough now to, to understand that my warranties are going to be voided because I enjoy taking my pens apart. But I have no problems fixing them, so. That's all that matters. Um, okay, so let's talk about, <coughs> let's see, barrels, threads, cartridge converter, piston, and finial ink, the pen. Okay, so. The pen is the Pro Gear. Slim. The ink is Monteverde Crocodile. And now we're going to do a writing sample. So
let's try some fast riding. Y'all see what happened when I wrote fast? I got some severe nib gunk. This is because one of the tines is out of alignment and is scratching through the page. You can see that one tine is just microscopically want like this. So I need to push up gently with my thumbnail, just gently two, three, four. Now you can see it should be in alignment. Oh yeah, that's much smoother. Because the shapes of the nibs are very, very, very fine tolerances for... It should look like this and not like... this with a little bit hanging down because like, <clears throat> this little corner right here will be very sharp depending on which way you slide your nib either going sideways or sideways and you'll feel that one way is sh sharper than another now this way is sharp the other way that you can do a little bit of smoothing is just put just the tiniest amount of pressure and then go backwards with just the tiniest amount of pressure and sometimes that will equal out whatever is going on with your pen now don't get it wrong this is not a flex pen but you want to just push just a little bit to get the the nib tines to be one with each other do a couple of lines in the downward direction. I'm sorry if you can hear a noise outside. It's pretty loud out today. Alright, let's check the wetness and flow. Slightly wet. Flow seems to keep up. Alright, now let's do uh, the world famous Pierre Gustafson test. Keeps up very well. Of course, after you're doing that, you're going to have to have some sort of a toilet paper or paper towel to wipe off the nib because it's going to have a little bit of crunch from the paper. <clears throat> okay, let's do some size comparison. Let's do some weights and measurements, and then let's do some size comparisons. So, 
This is your standard everyday nickel. Standard everyday nickel is about five grams. About five grams. <clears throat> the total pen is 20 point 20 grams ish. Wait. 20 grams total. Cap is about seven grams. And the body with ink is almost 13, 12 and a bit. body with ink. Okay. So what does that mean? What does that mean 12 and a bit grams? If you have a two nickels and one penny and you hold them in your hand that's how heavy the pen is with ink. Oops, let's see. Uh, let's do some measurements. The total. Total length is 124.1 millimeters. 124 millimeters. 120. What's it? 124. 120. 124 millimeters. 124 millimeters. The cap by itself. is 59 millimeters. And the body is from a tip to stern is 110 millimeters. grip. The length of the grip is fairly short, running at about a 17 millimeters, 17 millimeters long, and the width ranging from Four a nine point four nine point four to ten point four ten point four millimeters, <clears throat> which is not a very thick um, pen. The bear the uh, barrel. And its thinnest point is 8.2 millimeters. 8.2, but I don't know anybody who's holding their pen back here. Somebody might though, and at its absolute thickest point is 12 millimeters. And the length of the barrel is a hundred as a seventy four point one millimeters. L seventy four point one.
Okay. Let's do some comparisons with other pens that we might have near us to see what, how big this pen is. So I have decided that um, I don't think that showing them next to millimeters is going to help. So I figured I would just show them next to each of the pens and see if that would be faster ish. Where is my stupid? There you are. Okay. So now this is a noodler's triple. This is a noodler's triple tail. This is a Noodler's Ahab. This is a Noodler's Conrad. Slightly shorter than a Conrad. This is a Jane Davenport Incredible Fountain Pen. This is a Conklin Duragraph. Oops. Conklin Duragraph. <coughs> This is a Pilot, Pilot Petite One. This is a Pilot 19, so this is a Pilot 912. Slightly shorter than a 912. This is a Pilot Prera. It's very close in size to a Pilot Prera. It's a Pilot 78G Plus. G Plus is just slightly taller. This is a Pilot Falcon. Slightly shorter than a Falcon. This is a Hongdian Rainbow Forest, Black Forest Fountain Pen. This is a Hongdian N. Eight fountain pen. This is a Uli Red fountain pen. Oops. This is a Twisby Eco. Sorry. Twisby Eco. Twisby five eighty. Twisby Go. Twisby. This be Swipe, Lamy Safari, Lamy Vista, Urin 401, Jinhao 599, Lambatao 3059, Wingsung 3008, uh, Moonman T1, Mahjong P136, Hongdian N1S, Jinhao X450, Jinhao 159, This is a Literati desk pen, so super short than a desk pen. Pilot Parallel. A Fugilong 302. A Waterman 12. A Kaigaloo 356. A Canwright Desire, a Jinhao 51A, this is an Ackerman Piston Fountain Pen, this is a Manuscript Fountain Pen, 
This is a pen PPS clickable fountain pen. This is a Wingsung 613. Oops. This is a Wingsung 613. A Jinhao 992. All of these are Jinhao 992s. This is a Jinhao X750. 750. This is a Schneider Ray fountain pen. This is a ring. This is a lady ring top. Pocket Vintage Fountain Pen. This is a Lombatel 3009 Space Pen. This is a Pilot Petite One. This is a Tache 10, uh, 10TF? 10FT? FF10T. This is a Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya version 1. This is a Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya version 1.5. This is a Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya version 2. This is a Fountain Pen Revolution Jaipur. This is a Lamy. This is a Lamy Studio. Conklin Dirt Flex Endless Summer. Twisby Swipe. Leonardo Memento Magico. This is a Noodler's Conrad. This is a Twisby Mini AL in grape. This is a Pilot Vanishing Point. This is a Sailor 1911 Wicked Witch of the West Slim, a small. You have the small and the large. Okay. This is a Twisby Go. This is a Wing Sung 3003. This is a Pilot Preppy. Oops. Pilot Preppy. This is a Pilot Kakuno. This is a Waterman 12. And the last but not least, and I bet the one that you're all waiting for right now, is the Jinhao 82. I gotta tell ya, these are like spitting images of each other. And I gotta tell ya, I like the 82 better. One, because it has number five size nibs and I can trade them out. But two, because look at that beautiful sparkle. You can actually see the sparkles from afar. You can see that it is way sparklier than this one. I can't even tell there's sparkles in this. But you can totally tell from afar that there's sparkles in this. Unless your eye just happens to gleam it just right. Nope, you can't see them even from this far. And the camera is only like maybe less than a hand and a half away. So... Mm, whatever. Um, <clears throat> I did want to do a writing comparison between the two. So this is the Jinhao uh, 82, and this is the Sailor Pro Gear Slam. Pro Gear Slam has lots of feedback. And this is a Jinhao. Jinhao 82. This has extra fine nib. And I gotta say, it's way smoother than this medium fine nib is. 
because this one is just I don't have to put any pressure on it super smooth right this one I'm afraid to let go when I first got it I was afraid that it would skip it was scratchy it was not what a sailor pen should be now don't talk about prices on here because the price of these will probably change over time so if you're curious about the sailor pro gear slim you can check those out by searching google for sailor pro gear dragon something dragon Premier Slim Dragon Palace. I've never been to a Dragon Palace. I have no idea what a Dragon Palace looks like, but apparently it looks like this. So, I don't know. Um, let me see. What else can I talk about? Mm. <clears throat> it says that the max ink capacity is 1.18 millimeter milliliters. Blah, 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 blah. And, uh, oh, so the, the cartridge is 1.18 millimeter milliliters. And the ink capacity of the converter is 0.67 milliliters, which is half, a little under half of a cartridge. So that's something to think about. That pen is a gorgeous color. I'm sorry it doesn't write well. Not very common for Sailor Brand. Yeah, well, it did write, but it was very scratchy in all directions. I don't know what happened. Um, Camilla gave me these pens to, uh, to smooth them out and make them right. So I am going to return these to her and see if she wants them back because she said I could have them, but I got to tell you right now, I don't want them. <laughs> I'm like, Ugh. no, I'm not going to spend how much did these go for on Goulet, two hundred and twenty dollars. There's no way, not no. There's just no. Two hundred and twenty dollars. You could get a really nice. You could get a whole set of Jinhao nine nine Jinhao eighty twos. You could get like ten of these. For the price, no, you can get 20 of these for the price of one of these. Maybe 10 if you get them for like $2.88. So, I, I don't know. Okay, let's talk about likes and dislikes. Oh man, what's there to like? Um, it's a really nice tea. It's a really nice creamy color, creamy green color. It has a nice clip. has a gold nib, however. It gets a it gets a unsmiley face. It gets a it gets a frowny face cuz it's not good. Um it keeps up with an ink demand. Uh, 
Um, it's a cartridge converter. Um, I do believe that they come in a whole bunch of different sizes. Let me just double check. No, they only come in medium fine. Okay, so this is... Okay, let's talk about dislikes. <laughs> Only comes in medium fine. Ugh. Scratchy. A. F. If you know what that means, then you know what that means. Scratchy A F. So, um, needed tuning. Smoothing. Did not write out of the box. It's expensive. Other than that, I really can't think of anything else. Uh, the, the box was nice. Nice box. For, um, oh, do you know where the she purchased the pen? I don't know. All I know is I fixed it because I have, I have, a very smooth, very old one of these, and I have one of these. So I have made it right, but when it first got to me, it did not write at all. Does it have the pencil feedback like most sailors? No, this, uh, well, now it does, but when I got it, it skipped and spattered across the page because it was unusably scratchy. So I don't know what happened to it. But I have had to do, when you got to use your tools to fix a problem that really shouldn't be a problem to begin with, that's a red flag. And like, this is so, so fine. It's practically a mirror finish. There's what the, the back of that one looks like. And you can see that there's grit there, but there's barely any grit there at all. So I use that when I'm having a really bad time, and I know that the nib tines are aligned, and I know everything is aligned, but if it's not being cooperative, I do give it a little bit of polishing on this very worn out uh, emery board, which you should not have to do, and it's totally voiding my warranty but you know what it was a gift and if she wants it back at least it's gonna come back to her smoother than it came to me <laughs> so well, would I buy this pen? No, no, I wouldn't. Say, but I have seen other people, they have wonderful success with these pens but at this moment in time I cannot say with the two pens that I have been using for a week now I have the Sailor 1911 the Wicked of Witch it had the same problem that this one had it came at to me it was scratchy it wouldn't write the nib looked fine 
but it was just super scratchy and I don't know. I can't say that I would ever buy one of these pens. I just, no. No, 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 no. I'd rather buy a Leonardo. I'd rather buy a Leonardo Memento Magical. Look how beautiful this is. This was a uh, hundred and this was no two hundred and mm, how much was it? Did I spend? It was a uh, this was a If you buy it from Gold Spot, it's $199 right now. It doesn't come with a gold nib. However, I gotta tell you, it's about a million, million times smoother and about a million times more pretty than this pen. Alexa, stop. So, I, I don't know. If you're looking for a pocket pen, get a Jinhao 992. Or get yourself a Jinhao a, a, a Jinhao 992. And if, if you go on the Wish.com website, you can get all of the Jinhao 992s. I have all of the Jinhao 992s. They're like a dollar or two dollars, and I have all of the sizes. And they're number five size nibs, and they fit in the Jinhao 82. This is the 82 992. But if you can get all of the sizes for less than the price of this, why wouldn't you? That's what I'm asking. So, that is my review of this pen. What did you guys think of today's review? Are you guys thinking about getting a Sailor Pro Gear Slim? My advice, my hardcore set in stone advice is to go to a pen club. Try one out. And then sit on it. And I don't mean put it under your butt. I mean wait a little while. Find one that you think that you might like. And then find it in real life before you purchase it. Just give it a day. Let it breathe. Because everybody gets all excited. Oh, I got the new pen. And then five days later, you're done. So, try it out. Try it out. Sit on it for a day. Or a week. Find a good deal. Buy from a reputable seller. This is the number one thing that I always tell people is if you buy from a reputable seller, none of this eBay, none of this Ally Express. No, don't do that. Because what'll happen is, is you'll get the pen, and then if it's something wrong with it, oh, you can't send it back. All, all, are th all purchases are final. But if you say buy it from Goulet Pens and you dry write with it and it's scratchy, then you can put it back in the package and send it back to Goulet, and they will either send you a new one or they will give you your money back with a small 
fee for opening the package. And I think that is far worth it more than having to buy a pen and then just absolutely hate it. Don't feel confident buying a sailor when I'm already used to glass-like smoothness of a pilot nib. Yes, exactly. I appreciate River. I need a pen club. Need to find a pen club. Yes, you are in Peachtree, Georgia, North Carolina. I know that there's a there's um there's a pen club out there. I will ask my, let's see, I will ask my friend, who is also a calligrapher, his name is Dr. Joe Vitolo, and I will see if he can recommend me for a pen club for you. Because aren't you close to Atlanta? Yeah, you're close to Atlanta. Not like walk down the street close, but you're close enough that you could, you could find a ride there. Yeah. Anyway, that's all that I've got for today. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. I hope that you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Like, comment, subscribe. Ring the little bell. Make sure it's set to all so when I upload new content, YouTube notifies you. And I will be back on Thursday. Hold on. I will be back on Thursday with another video. So take care until then. Oh, I love you. Bye. Have a great day. Also, you probably shouldn't spin your pen like that. You're going to get ink in the cap. Okay, bye.